Do I need a reason to play the Airwolf theme? No! So don't criticise me for it. It's not allowed. Yeah, you poor, insignificant and totally... Ah, whatever. Yeah, I'm not the Murloc. The Murloc's better insulting people than I am. Anyway, this is Blue, please, here on Wild Radio. Yes, that was the Airwolf theme. Those who don't know what Airwolf was, you are heathens to the cause, I say. Great helicopter show back in the 80s. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Basically, it was this helicopter that could do all sorts of things like backflips and fly into space and all that kind of thing. It was great. It was like the air version of Knight Rider. And if you're not careful, I'll play that, so stop it. Uh, before that, MC Hammer, you can't touch this. And no, you cannot. With additions from MC Murloc. <laughs> oh, dear. Murlocs will never get old. No, they won't. Right, okay. Now, someone took a long, long time to send me a long, long post about Paladins. And I think it would be only fair if I credited that work and actually read it. It's long, but I'm going to read it anyway. So, make yourselves comfortable. Think of it as a bedtime story. Right. Mr. R. Peterson, also known as Zilu from Earthen Ring. He obviously knows what he's talking about. So, here we go. The real problem with Paladins is that they're not supposed to be a healing slash melee hybrid. Or, sorry, that they are supposed to be. But they're not. I and others find it rather peculiar that a melee caster healer hybrid does both healing and melee better than the melee healing hybrid. I.e., I assume what he means there is... Shamans. Shouldn't the melee healing hybrid be slightly better at, yes, melee and healing than a hybrid that is able to do all three things? Yes, I am talking about the Shaman. The Shaman is a great hybrid class. It does what it's supposed to do. The only thing the Paladin does better than the Shaman is that he wears heavier armor and as such can take more hits. Yes, he does have immunity shields. Oh, the agony. The immunity shields are annoying. Yes, very useful. Not really. They let you live longer. whoop de doo No real effect on any battle apart from making you last longer. It has a use while soloing. They're like extra lives. If you manage to get killed while soloing as a paladin, you should uh, go back to playing Tetris. At the moment, paladins are clerics. They are crappy priests who make up for their crappiness by wearing plate and having some rather beneficial party buffs. Orbs and blessings. All nice. They do make a decent support class. Now, what paladins want, which is what they are not getting in 1.9, is the ability to specialize. Specialization is done via talent trees. Look at the druid. That's how you let a hybrid specialize and be better at one thing. Paladins have three talent trees. Holy, Protection, and Retribution. These sound rather self-explanatory when it comes to what they do. In a hybrid world... In a hybrid world? In an ideal world, a Retribution Paladin would be decent at melee. Better than a Shaman, not as good as a Warrior. A Protection Paladin should be able to tank, more or less on par with a Feral Druid. A Holy Paladin should be able to heal better than a Shaman, even a Resto Spec 1, although not as good as a Priest or a Resto Druid. This is, however, not how it is at the moment. Holy is the supposed healing tree, so what the hell is Holy Shock doing in this tree as the 31 pointer? Pre 1.8 and the Hammer of Wrath, this was the only non undead ranged attack a paladin could muster. This is. Why is this not in the tree that emphasizes offense, retribution? I have no idea. I doubt that even Blizzard has. While Blessing of the Kings, a blessing that increased all of your stats by 10%, is the end tier of retribution. Did some dev make a typo here? The talent trees also have the issues that the talents are spread around in a very untidy and confusing way. Why is there a talent that increases your defense skill by 10 in the retribution tree? Tanking skills are supposed to go in protection. Again, they don't. There's a very simple solution to all of this. That is not being done with 1.9. Sure, 1.9 will tidy up the talents a bit, but they still lack specialization. What I'd suggest is to add one core talent to each tree that lets a paladin do that particular job a lot better. In the holy tree, add a talent that is somewhat alike nature's swiftness. Make your next holy spell instant, and suddenly paladins can throw a decent heal in an instant. In the protection tree, add a taunt. Yes, a taunt. Works exactly like the warrior taunt, except that it will require a substantial amount of talent points invested in protection. In the retribution tree, bring back the one of the good old strikes, an instant attack that does weapon damage plus X holy damage with some cooldown. Something reminiscent of the hunter's raptor strike. Why does a ranged DPS class have more melee prowess than a melee hybrid, hmm? That's a lot of text, I know. That's by Zilu, Earth and Ring. That's the best post I've ever seen anyone send to working as intended. That is astoundingly good. And I feel like I understand the Paladin a little bit more after reading it. Now, one of my ex-guildies had a similar kind of idea with the Shaman, saying that the Shaman was a bit messed up. 
and it's the same kind of principle only as Zilu said the paladin seems to be a far more messed up class than the shaman is hybrid classes are difficult yeah they're a tricky thing to get right that's just the way hybrid classes are they are tricky they are not easy because they're not your core there are certain things you expect a mage to be able to do for instance a priest a warrior but what about a hybrid class what are they expected to do very good Outstanding. You win the Murloc Award for Murlocness. <laughs> and that's the end of the subject on the matter for this week's work is intended, as far as I'm concerned. Right, I've got a few more emails, a few more shout-outs, and a few more features to get out of the way before the end of the show. Okay. Right. Dave Pooley, also known as Gimbal, says, The way it works out now as regards to raid dungeon resets is as follows. Guilds are doing MC on different nights of the week, and this spreads the players with spare time out to do PvP and such. With a uniform reset, players will most likely be doing MC before and after the reset, and they will all have time for PvP around the same time, aka more battlegrounds. Ah, interesting point. You must also note that multiple battleground queues are going to be put into the game, which is cool, because quite frankly, I don't want to have to choose between the battlegrounds. I wouldn't mind as long as it's a battleground. AV, AB... What's on Gulch? It's all the same to me. I get to kill the Alliance, and that's what I'm on a PvP server for. More Battlegrounds. Very interesting idea, something I didn't think of. Perhaps it would be a knock-on effect. We'll have to see. Okay. A few more shout-outs, and then I should be playing Nubcake News. A shout-out to Bat Badger. Or Fat Badger. Or Cat Madger. Hat Zadger. Bat Fadger. He off tanked in Zulgar up, and he did a good job. Although I'm sure he did get us killed a few times. Never mind. A huge shout out to all of Perfect Execution, especially Bearer and Soldier. That's from Anarchy. A shout out goes to Tenna, who sits around in her pants playing WoW all day. Rock on. Okay. Anyone else want to shout out? Do it now or forever hold your peace because this is the last time I'm doing it this show. A shout out to Manal who apparently killed the Ferian last week and they're going to kill him again tonight on Stormscale. That's from Pain. Anyone else want to shout out? Make it quick. And a shout out to Epoxy who is my new guild. Some people will be aware that I left the Halibuts. I'm not going to explain why but I'm in a new guild. And they're cool. I'm now their raid leader, and we took down the first boss in Zolgarub on our second ever try of Zolgarub. The first ever try is me as a raid leader. The fact that they even survived with me as a raid leader is a bloody miracle. So congratulations to them all. A shout out to the Paladin keyboard. That's from Katamari. Some people are no doubt aware of the Paladin keyboard. A shout out to the Bunker for playing on the Maelstrom, working on our level 40 mounts. That's from Yevon324. A shout out to the person's name I can never pronounce. Konempi. Possibly. Me. A shout out to Dan Dan because it's me. A shout out to Angel Girl because she said me, 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 me and grins. There you go. <laughs> Everyone's shouting me, 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 me today. A shout out to the Oblivion Guild on Dragonmore EU because we just own Gehennis in MC. A shout out to the Adventurers Inc. Guild on Argent Dawn because they lack members. So I think Zinnick is putting out a request for more members. If you're on Argent Dawn and you want a guild, go and join Adventurers Inc. And they probably adventure. Yeah. A shout out to Wolf's uncle who just got hold from China. Well done. I wonder if we bought any gold over there. Evil, Na Evil Gnome says, wait. Why does he say wait? A shout out to Marsilio. And a shout out to Core, taking rag at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. A shout out to Shorin, who is 3k. I've already said that! Vasca, you're not paying any attention to me. I've already said a shout out to Shorin, who is getting 3k rep off getting the undead epic mount in Defy's Brotherhood. A shout out to. Oh, 
Verilix says, you, 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 for the sheer hell of it. So a shout-out to me from Verilix. Very nice. Right, okay, that's enough. No more shout-outs. I actually can't even see my RC window anymore. It's totally clogged. It's all dead. So, this feature has been missing for a few weeks. I've had writer's block. What can I say? I hold my hands up and say that I totally lost any ounce of creativity left in my body. This is Nubcake News. Welcome to this week's edition of Nubcake News. Coming up later in the program, our investigation into the habits of the server hamster comes to a shocking conclusion with scenes of violence and debauchery. But first, the circus is coming to town, or more accurately, this year's hottest fashion item. World of Warcraft is holding its first annual catwalk show, entitled uh, Tier 2 Darling. Top models from around the world have been flown in to show off the latest designs of Blizzard Entertainment's fashion department, the largest and most well-funded department in the company. Already lines have been forming around the block to get tickets to this glamorous and exclusive event. We talked to several excited members of the Gamers Alliance for Noob Killers, Gank, who had camped out for weeks to get tickets to the show. This is what they had to say. This is clearly the most important event in WoW history. It will bring game balance as never before. Wowzers, Blizzard Rocks, Tier 2 for the win. Additional generic Blizzard compliment. However, it would appear that not everyone is happy with this astounding technological development. A small group of protesters who call themselves the Whining Alliance for Noobish Control, or... Wait, I can't say that on there. Is someone trying to get me fired? It's not funny, you bastard! First the office party and now this... <laughs> yes, oh, sorry. Uh, this small group has been protesting outside the event venue for the last few weeks, shouting such obscenities as Nerf Blizzard and mount giant water bottles to the shoulders of the Netherwind la 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 lol. We braved the yelling and smell to talk to their leader, a Mr. Dark Emperor 007, who had this to say. We think that Blizzard are Ted Obsor for creating these new tier twos. Why must Blizzard ruin absolutely everything? I could do a better job. Just give me a copy of MS Paint in 20 minutes. We all know that's what Blizz uses. La 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 la. It's obvious that Blizzard should listen to the community and not its own art directors on how new art should be created. The results would be far better. I mean, there's 4.5 million of us and only 20 of them. So clearly we would do a better job. La 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 la. Our turn of events indeed. So we turn to the experts. Famous fashion designer Calvin Clone found time in his busy mincing schedule to talk to us. Oh yes, well, Blizzard's new range will clearly be this season's must-have, darling. You can't be seen without it. Oh no, that's what makes you a very bad person. Ross will be the hottest seller with its ever-so-chic Power Ranger cross with a blender looks very sharp. Indeed. We ran for almost 20 minutes without looking back until we were sure that we'd escaped the clutches of this crazed madman. But the conclusion is clear. Tier 2 is here to stay, and anyone who disagrees with its super mega awesomeness will be taken away in shot. This reporter is going to put on his bright purple dragon stalker set and then move unseen through the undergrowth as he hunts his prey. This has been Nubcake News. Good night.